Welcome back to the channel, Racer X here. And in today's video, we're actually going to talk about the Mustang. And a lot of people have said, look, Mustangs, they crash a lot more than other performance cars do. And uh, today I'm gonna talk all about it. Are Mustangs really crowd killers? Do they crash a lot more than comparable Scat Packs or Camaros or anything like that? So today I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this. I have some statistics to kind of back this up. Should be kind of an interesting little conversation. If you guys are brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I have lots of wonderful plans for the rest of this year going into 2023 and off we go. So be it fair or not, the stigma about the Mustang, it is out there, right? People think that it is more dangerous than other cars. Uh, it's just hard to handle. And you know what? There could be some truth to that. I mean, there's been so many videos out there on the internet. We've seen lots of memes about it, about Mustangs flying off into crowds, whether you see them at the Cars and Coffee or the regular car meets or whatever. We're constantly seeing videos put out there on social media about these Mustangs flying into crowds, and they seem to do it just more often than other cars do. So I really wanted to get to the bottom of this. I mean, is it really a thing that the Mustang is more dangerous? And if it is, what are the leading causes? I mean, what's really, what's really happening here behind the scenes? Now, before we get too far into the video, I do want to address something just really quick because I know it's going to come up in the comments. And those of you that have followed my channel for a while, you realize that yes, this is not my first twin turbo Mustang GT. Um, I did have a blue one before this. And unfortunately I did get into an accident on I-75. I actually went into a wall at uh, 70 miles an hour late at night, uh, one night when I went through some mud and uh, it was just a really unfortunate situation. And I did see a few comments out there. Look, had you been in a Mopar, that wouldn't have happened. Look, you, you drove a Hellcat for, for four or five years before, never had an accident. You drove the Scat Pack and all these other cars. And yet that was your very first accident you ever had. And it just happened to be in a Mustang. And truth be told, it was really just a coincidence. Had I been in any of those cars uh, in that same circumstance, the outcome would have been exactly the same because there was just not a whole lot I could do about it. But um, yeah, it is that, but it really wasn't the Mustang's fault. It wasn't driver error. It was really just circumstantial. Matter of fact, I even had, I never released the footage, but I did have a dash cam on there as well, which the insurance company and police use uh, to kind of corroborate the fact that no, I wasn't racing anybody or acting crazy or doing anything. Uh, and that is, of course, why my car was covered under insurance and all that kind of stuff as well. But I did want to address that. Wasn't really the Mustang in that particular situation, but uh, let's talk a little bit more about it. So when I do these types of videos, I really do as much research as I can kind of behind the scenes to be as factual and objective about the information that I give you as possible. And uh, I will admit, I'm having a really hard time finding legitimate statistics about Mustangs and how often they crash compared to say like a Camaro SS or a Challenger Scat Pack. I feel like that is kind of the fairest comparison because it's sort of that middle of the road tier. It's not that Shelby or Hellcat tier. It's also not down at like the V6 here is kind of that middle of the road. A lot of people own them. Um, and you know, you can kind of skew statistics to say really whatever you want, because if you have more Mustangs produced than Camaros, if you have double the amount, well, stands to reason that you would have double the amount of crashes. And so I just can't seem to make the statistics make any sense. But to this point, I've really not been able to kind of corroborate anybody's story about the Mustang crashing more often than these other offerings out there. So why is that stigma really out there? Because yeah, you do see all over social media, these guys crashing their Mustangs at these car meets and stuff. It's just kind of a weird thing. So the very first thing that popped into my mind was, well, maybe Mustang owners are just younger. So I looked up the average age of a Mustang owner compared to the Camaro SS and the Challenger. And it turns out the average age of a Mustang owner is 53 years old. Who'd have thought, right? It's actually older by one year than the Camaro at 52, and the average Challenger owner is actually 51. So I can't imagine that uh, that has anything to do with it. It is kind of weird. And, and people say, well, there's no way that that's an accurate statistic. And even myself, I was like, well, how can they be 51 years old on average? Because you see so many young people driving them. And uh, But the truth is, is that you know those people are more prevalent on social media, but those statistics seem to ring pretty true. Everything I have found uh, that seems to be the median age, which makes a little bit of sense when you really look at how expensive cars are getting, right? Because, heck, you can't buy a Mustang GT hardly 
for under about $45,000. And the same with the, uh, you know, the Challenger and the Camaro SS of the same trim level. I mean, you know, when you're getting up into the high 40s, into the 50s, all that kind of stuff uh, in terms of price, yeah, it is the older demographic that can tend to afford these. So there's that piece of it. So as I dug into it a little bit more, I actually found some things in the Mustang's favor. For example, when it comes to torque, torque is that initial hit, that tire shredding just kick, right? Um, this car has significantly less torque than both the Camaro SS and the Scat Pack. 420, I believe the Camaro SS is like 455 and 475 in that punchy uh, Hemi for on the Challenger, right? So uh, with less torque, you think you would be less apt to lose traction in this plus it is a 10 speed so i mean just the way that it builds power is completely different of course we know the camaro comes with the 10 speed as well but with less torque you feel like it would be a little bit more controllable and also when it comes to just social media right what is out there that attracts the younger buyers to these cars um which i feel like you know the statistics back it up but the younger the driver typically the more accidents they tend to have and uh, the more irresponsible they tend to be not in every case but the statistics like i said the insurance company will tell you the same thing and uh you know this car doesn't nearly get the social media attention like in all the rap videos and all of that kind of stuff that say the challenger and the charger get from mopar you just don't see that sort of thing happening with the mustang quite as much it's not it's not that it doesn't get the attention it just doesn't get that same type of attention to draw all that you know that younger demographic uh that tends to crash more so i mean just another weird deal so the next thing that I thought of was, well, maybe the Mustang just has really bad tires. And truth be told, these little 235s, yes, they are far from adequate when it comes to this kind of power. But the Scat Pack also comes with 245s on its base offering. The Camaro does too, 245 tires. Yes, I realize you have the Performance Pack, and yeah, you've got wide body Scat Packs out there, and then you've got uh, the more aggressive trim levels in the Camaro as well. So you can get uh, wider tires optioned out on these, but there's no real difference. 235, 245s, it's still not enough tire for any of those. And uh, there's no distinct difference really in my mind on, on the tire selection when it comes to these cars. So. That's not it. Okay, now I have to be completely honest with you. You guys know me, those of you that follow me on the channel. I always try and be objective and truthful when I talk about things. And uh, I have reviewed many, many cars, owned lots of really fast cars, lots of different trim levels, and you guys have seen me review all of them. And uh, if I'm completely 100% honest with you, yes, the Mustang does seem to want to come around and get a little bit more out of sorts than the other two. I, I can't really say exactly why. Like I said, I've tried to back it all up with statistics statistics and all that sort of stuff. And really, I've only been able to come to uh, a couple of conclusions here. One other thing that may lead to several Mustangs being crashed is prior to 2015, so uh, the S197 and older, the Mustangs featured a live axle. And uh, we know in the car industry that, look, the live axles tend to cause uh, the car to get a little bit more out of sorts. I've experienced that for myself in the past, long time ago, but uh, I definitely know from driving a lot of these that live rear axles tend to want to kind of get a little bit more loose uh, than independent or IRS uh, type suspension. So maybe that is a part of it as well. Well, of course, we know they in 2015 and up with the S550 Mustang, they did go to independent rear suspensions. And when I did some research on it, it does appear that um, there are somewhat less uh, instances of crashes with the newer models than with the older ones. So I was able to at least corroborate that piece of it. Now, one other thing that I have heard mentioned by several people is regardless of the fact that all three, the Camaro, the Challenger, and the Mustang have a traction control system, the one designed by Ford is far worse than the other two. And maybe there is some ring of truth to that. The problem is that uh, that particular statistic is extremely hard to substantiate. There's really no way to say, hey, look, the, uh, the, the one in the Camaro or the one in the Challenger is far superior to what Ford produced in terms of traction control, but maybe there's something to that as well. Now, there are really two factors, at least in my mind, that contribute to the Mustang feeling a little bit lighter in the rear end than the Challenger and the Camaro. Now, the first is weight. It, I can't really explain it when it comes to the Camaro because basically the Camaro and the Mustang, it can depend a little bit on trim, but they're both about 3,700 pounds. A comparable uh, Scat Pack, though, a Challenger, is about 4,300 pounds. So, I mean, a pretty significant uh, difference, about 600 pounds, and that is a lot. 
and uh, like I said, there's really no difference at all between this car and the uh, and the Camaro. So there's that piece of it. But then compare it to the wheelbase of the cars. And those of you that have been driving a long time, who have driven a lot of really fast cars, you understand that wheelbase makes a really big difference. And whenever I've driven uh, the Challengers, they do feel very planted and very stable compared to the Mustang. At least in my mind. Like I said, driven a lot of them, guys. Um, but the uh, wheelbase on the Challenger is actually over nine inches longer than it is in the Mustang. And even though the Camaro weighs about the same, the wheelbase is about, uh, what, three and a half inches longer on the Camaro. So the Camaro does feel slightly more stable than the Mustang does. But really, it's a combination of those two things. It is the car being much lighter with a smaller wheelbase. And that, I believe, is why this car just feels more unstable. So at the end of the day, there really is no concrete evidence to suggest that these cars actually crash more than say a Camaro, a Challenger, a Corvette, anything like that. I just have not been able, as much research as I've done, I have not been able to show anything that shows that these cars actually crash more. Now, are they actually crowd killers and all that kind of stuff? Really, it is up to you. You're always going to get the comments, regardless of whether you can back it up or not. Oh, the Mopars, they, they just don't crash as much. But I really have not been able to substantiate that at all because the Mopars crash quite a bit as well. And maybe that's for a different reason. I actually did a video on that a little while back about why so many Scat Packs and Hellcats crash. Uh, a little bit different story on those. So uh, we'll just kind of leave it up to you guys' interpretation of what the real story is. Are Mustangs uh, really crowd killers or do they just get a bad rap uh, you guys let me know in the comments down below and i will catch you on the next one so until then racer x